<laughs> this is just some micro tape. I'm um, just going to place it in the client's eye. Basically, I'm going to put it in line with her lash line here, and that just helps like elongate the eye. So if you just look up for me. Also, I try and get the client to look up so that I can place it under here, so that then it gives me a little guide as well when I'm going to be working underneath. And if you just close back over it, and usually it just falls straight into place. I just place that there and take it up and keep it here. So it's always better to have longer tape because then you've got a rough idea of where you're going to be working to. Once you've got it on, you always need to stand back and just make sure that it's even. And if you just don't your eye for me, and just close back over. I'm just going to move this down slightly. Got this to move here. Just look back up for me, please. And just close. That's fine, so I would think that's given me the good place where I'm going with it. Next thing I'm going to do is just take some, it's MAC, um, it's a paint pot, so I'm going to take it in soft ochre. Um, soft ochre I've painted is quite good, just scoop a little bit out, put it on my hand and just apply it with a um, fluffy brush onto the client's eyelid. Um, just run it over. This basically this stops like any oils producing like coming through on the eyelids and like it more or less taking the eyeshadow away from the eye. So this helps um, prolong the eyeshadow that's going to be placed on top and it also stops it from creasing, which more or less like bits missing and going like, uneven and things like that on the eye. So I just like buff that in all over and plus it helps take away if there's any like red tones or anything. It just helps minimise any red tones and things on the client's eyes. Which you do get quite a lot on the eyelid area. Open your eyes for me, please. Now, with Brittany's eye shape, um, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and bring her eye, like just to kind of try and give it like a cat eye kind of um, shape. So, we're going to use like soft browns. Um, I'm going to give her a pop of colour in the middle of her eye. If you just close your eye, I'm going to put a pop of colour in here and it's going to be called like a spotlight makeup. Um, this will just give that wee extra pop into the middle of her eye. Um, again, because she's going to a wedding, bridesmaids, it's always like soft colours. Um, try and tend to stay away from blacks because I think blacks can be too harsh. Um, it's more a nighttime look. So we try and go with um, all the browns and things and just using like a black um, eyeliner on it. So just taking a matte brown colours, um, light brown. Just going to swirl it, tap it off, tap off the excess on your hand. And I'm just going to let, tilt the head back and lift the eyebrow and just come in at the corners in circular motions and when you're trying to blend it out always rub off the excess in your hand and blend circular motions I always find it's best to hold the brush like a pencil um, if you're holding it too much at the end you don't really get that much control so definitely holding it in and just using the tip of your brush as well. And then I take it just slightly over and back out. And then just come back in, same colour again, tapping off the excess. I'm going to come into the inside this time. Again just lifting the brow up into the inside, circular motions. Just taking it up. Just going to switch to a smaller brush just for the inside. Once 
with this look as well. You'll start to see like this where the spotlight is going to form. You can see it a wee bit lighter. So again, just lifting the palette into the corner. If you just hold it for me, I feel it. I'm just close my hand. I always just want to use the tip of your brush as well and just like small circular motions because that'll make the the product spread slightly and you don't get the harsh lines. That's you don't you don't want harsh lines. Um and then just taking the same colours and repeating them on the other side. When it comes to the inside, I'll also just pat some more so that she's getting a little bit of a coverage in here. And the focus is going to be more on the middle part of the eye. It's always good to use um, like goat hair brushes or natural hair brushes as well because if you use any synthetic hair then that's going to give you a more harsher uh, and they don't blend as well like so if you want to pack on colour it's good to use synthetic there for, but for blending I always think real hair brushes are best. And this is just going to come right in here. I'm just patting that one slightly just so that you get some more definition of the darkness. I could just get it on this way, thank you. Again, just always remember to lift the eye.
then taking your fluffy brush that you use for the first colour and just blending this over. Do you always do the eyes first? I tend to do the eyes first. Um, some people will start with the base and then go on to the eyes last but personally I find with like any fall and things like that from the eyeshadow, fair enough we've got these which do help a wee bit but then if there was to be a base on here and I was to take this off it's going to take the base off and then again if I had the base and didn't have this on, if I was to go on and do the eyes um, again, you're going to get the dark fall, which you're going to have to clean up and then replace the foundation again. So, I find that um, it's just a waste of product, really, if you go and do the base first. But everybody does have different preferences. But I think if you're using dark makeup, it's always um, darker colours or dark browns, it's always best to do the eyes first. Clean this little bit and just a little bit here. And just because we're using like golds and colours like that, I've just went here with like soft browns or darker brown. But to blend this out a little bit more here, I'm going to just um, pop a kind of light, really light colour just under a brow bone. This will just highlight it. Just tap them off any excess as well before you use it. And the blender. And down. And just to blend this in, I'm going to take my fluffy brush again. I've just got a yellow colour, really tapping it off so that there's not a lot there. Like you'll see how much excess does start coming off but I think it's always wise to take it off. Again some excess off in the back of my hand and I'm just starting at the corner. Any more that needs to come off tapping here and just taking this up and over and again that just helps us blend in. And just bringing it onto the crease and taking it through. If there's any other colours here, just blend them in nicely. This is a synthetic brush because I'm wanting to pack the colour on, so I'm just using this one here and just into the colour. Just get them back up to the client's eyes and just keep them closed and just patting this on to the middle part of the eye. You just open your eye and just close it again.
And I've just gave my brush a spray with a fixing spray there. It's just so that I can put this on now and as you'll see it actually makes the colour a little bit more vibrant. And are these all MAC? No, I use them um, all different. The shadows that I've uh -huh. actually used here are a mix of MAC shadows, um, Inglot, Urban Decay. Uh -huh. That's a mix of shadows. Um, I find with Urban Decay you get a lot more shimmer and things like that in your products whereas uh -huh. um, MAC obviously they have a wide range um, but for to do like smoky eyes and things like you can't really have a lot of shimmer and try to blend because the shimmers don't blend well together and if you use shimmer and you're just trying to blend then basically you will get a lot of it can then just become really messy so I quite like the Urban Decay for either the vibrancy colours or like this for instance, like the shimmer just popping it in the middle. If you just open your eyes and goes back over. But the Inglot shadows as well, they're really good value for money, I really like them. Take the tape off. This tape because a wee bit stickier this one than usual but just being careful if you take it off the client's skin that you make sure you take it off small. As you'll see as well, that also gives you a really, really sharp line. It gives you quite a defensive there. So just going to go underneath our eyes now. And if you just look up for me. And just get in here with the brown colour. And is this one the MAC? This is a MAC one, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's one cork, this one is. Because of this look as well, um, we're just going to keep it soft underneath, so that's why I'm just putting on that soft brown, just on a lower lash line. Um, don't really want it harsh with like blacks and things like that as well, so just keeping it very, very soft. cut from the outside of the lash as well if you take it from the inside then basically it's going to be longer here and it's going to be longer here and that's the bit that's going to irritate the inside of the client's eye so I always recommend taking it from the outside of the lash so that you're taking it from the longest part and keeping it in the shorter part just taking off any edges so just put 
put some glue on that and leave that one to set. And then while that one's doing, I'll measure for the other eye. Just close your eyes for me. And just letting that get a little bit tacky as well. Just apply it onto the lashes. Some people like to use tweezers to help them apply it. I prefer to use my fingers. Um, I just put it on and then I just hold it against the lash line and just let that set for a couple of minutes. Just hold it for a wee second until it does start bonding. And again, you can get lash glue that comes either, um, even though this, you see this is white just now, it dries clear, but you can also get a black lash glue, which we do have. Just open your eyes for a second and just close back over. Um, as you can see where we've put the lash on it does act as a slight eyeliner on the eye as well um, but this is also good because when we go to apply the, um, the eyeliner you've also if you're not really that good at doing eyeliner you can also then use this as a guide so that's quite helpful um, we find that gel liner sometimes works a wee bit if you're not good at doing eyeliner then we sometimes find a gel liner works a little bit better um, but I'm going to use a liquid liner so if you just keep your eyes closed I just put this in. Um, again, I can use the band of this lash as a guide. And I always think it's best to start in the middle, work your way out, and then go gradually in the way because you want your liner to be thinner at the inside. So I always recommend starting off that wee bit heavier at the outside and then you can come in thinner. But if you're not very good at liner, then gel is best. Just keep your eyes closed to be seconds. So if they open their eyes too quick, it can then like go up here on the client and I'll just ruin their eye makeup, so I would recommend to keep their eyes closed until it does dry. You'll see I've just got it a wee bit thicker here, so it's just trying to keep that on straighter line and just bring it in. And if you just open your eyes for a minute and just close back over. 
and if you just keep them close to a second again. Now while that's drying what I'll do is I'll just look at the client's skin, basically find out like what kind of foundation they like, what kind of foundation they normally wear and do they like a fuller coverage, do they like a dewy finish, do they like quite like glowy or um, just basically how they like it. So I usually take the micellar water and I just put some onto a cotton pad. And that's just the, the gar Garnier. Garnier, this mm -hmm. one. Um, and I just wipe it over the client's face just to make sure that basically they have nothing really on. Um, if they have anything, it's just going to take the excess off. And what I do is I just, well, that wee bit of liner's drying, I just go around and I do all that. Um, and then I go back into the eyes at the very end again and just fix up anything that does need to be fixed. So Brittany, um, you'd said earlier that you like a uh, more fuller coverage but you still like it that wee bit like glossy and things as well, don't you? Like dewy finish, but she does like the coverage um, on her skin. So I'm going to just use, it's a moisture match, it's just an illuminating um, moisturiser. I'm going to put that on and then I'm going to use a fuller coverage foundation on her. I'm just applying this with that brush, just putting on some foundation. Um, so you you suggest putting moisturiser on with a brush? Yeah, I I just like it. I just I think when you're doing it on a client. Um, sorry if you just close your eyes over. As you can see, when we've opened there, we've just got a little bit up here, but that will be easy enough to fix. So we can get that on right at the end. Um, yeah, I think um, putting it on with a brush, I think it feels nice, especially if you're doing somebody else's makeup. If it's your own makeup, then that's fine. Some people are okay with the hands and things like that, but um, if you're doing someone else's, I think it's nicer just to use a brush. I'm just going to take that wee bit away just now. Just get my little cotton bud and just roll in it slightly. Just taking my blending brush again, just taking it over, just to blend in these little bits that I've wiped away. You'll see as well that when I'm applying this you do get some foliage onto the lashes, um, onto the lashes. so again you can just take a little brush and just sweep that away off the lash. So now we've applied the illuminating foundation, um, um, illuminating moisturiser. Estee Lauder Double Wear Light that we're using um, in shade 3. When they're going to a wedding as well, you don't want them to look too caked in makeup, so it is quite important that we try and get it as natural as possible. So I just really start at the cheeks and just taking it out the way. And do you apply foundation with a brush as yeah, well? Yeah, I always apply it with a brush. Um, I think it's the best way to get 
the most out of your product as well. Like if you use it and do it with a sponge, then the sponge basically soaks up some of your product as well. So a lot of your products get into the sponge and not actually onto the face. And if you use it with like if you do a synthetic brush, I think sometimes the synthetic like these brushes, these ones here. Um, if you use it on these ones, I feel that you can get quite streaks on the face. So by using it with this brush, I just feel it gives a more even, an even finish. Just go straight up from me. I just come below the eyes because what I'll do is I go in there with um, some concealer. Because I find some foundations can be a wee bit too harsh under the eye and it can make it go quite crepey looking so I tend to just go under with a nice concealer and blend it in and I just always blend it in under as well Only take it so far up in the hairline, and because Brittany is so light and things as well, you need to be careful around the hairline as this is where it's going to like, more or less clog, and you'll see um, go into the hairline. So I just take it so far, a little bit on, and I just blend it with my finger into the hairline. Just try and be careful, obviously, around the hairline and things that if they've had their hair done as well before they've come in to have their makeup done, it's important to just careful around about that. And what concealer is this? This one is the Naked Skin by Urban Decay. It is in light neutral. Um, yeah, it's just a light colour. Um, this just helps, just gives like the under eyes some highlight and things. If you just look up for me, um, I just like applying this. It's actual. This is an eyeshadow brush, but um, I just like using this for underneath the eye and I just kind of bring it down into like a triangle underneath the eye. This also helps kind of lift the face which is like where you would see like the cheekbones and thing here. Just kind of take it up under here in a triangular kind of shape and just look straight up for me and just brushing under just to make sure and also trying to get into this wee bit of the nose just to make sure you do have it all covered. You can also just pat it in with your finger if you need to. Just fine by using the fluffy brush, it just helps blend, blend it in also. Brittany also likes um, a contour to her face, but we're not obviously she's going to a wedding, so we're not going to give her as much of a heavy um, contour as what she would normally have. Like if she was everyday wear, we're going to just go slightly lighter. So we're just going to do that with powders and things usually. Um, for a heavier contour, I would do with like concealers or foundations. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this. I'm just going to put some of the light concealer as well down the top of her nose. This is just to give some highlight. 
um, but using the powders and things for a contour that also just gives it a more subtle finish rather than a really heavy look. Now I'm just going to set our makeup. I'm using a MAC Invisible Setting. You can just put some on, tapping it off. It just looks straight up for me. Just putting this under the areas which normally get quite oily, um, which I normally feel are quite oily. To see your forehead. I am cheeks and yeah, my forehead. So just putting this here, concentrating on these areas where she would go oily. And then what I do is I just take the excess off there and then just kind of buff all this into her skin. This is going to help her makeup last all day. really important to buff any powder in really really well because um, this is where if it's not buffed in properly this is where you get like flashback if someone's like taking a picture of you anything like that right away it bounces but then um, the particles reflect and this is why you end up with like a white looking face so it's always important to buff setting powder into the skin. So what setting powder is it you're using? That was just the MAC Invisible, um, MAC Invisible setting powder. Um, it goes, it's, it'll go onto your brush white, um, but as you can see it doesn't make her face any paler or darker or anything like that. It just goes on clear and just sets all the makeup. Like I said, just buffing really, really well into the skin. I think that that colour as well, it just gives a natural, kind of really natural, nice glow. Um, just, it's not too pinky, it's not too dark, I think it's just a nice, nice blush colour. She's not wanting to wear any lip liner or anything, um, she's just wanting to keep it very natural with a gloss. This is um, because she feels she's not really um, confident putting lip liner on, so obviously we always say your makeup will last all day, but we do recommend that you're going to have to touch up lip gloss, anything like that, unless you want to start putting lip stains on. So, because um, she is confident, she wears lip gloss all the time herself, so we're just going with a little nice soft pink lip gloss, it's a Bare Minerals and it's um, A-Lister, I think this one is, yeah, A-Lister so we're just going to go with that, um, Brittany's got this one herself so she can top it up throughout the day and I'm just using a little lip, um, um, lip wrap It's quite nice when you do it as well and you do have like a lip liner and you can even fill the lips in with the colour of the lip liner you're using and then going on, go over it with a nice gloss but um, like I said Brittany doesn't like using any lip liner or anything so I'm just going to keep it quite, quite plain. And if you just open your eyes on me, perfect. Now just to join in this little bit, if you just tilt your head back slightly, you'll see as if it's just quite empty in here. So just to join this little bit up and into here and into here, we're just going to use some liner on a thin, very fine brush. just scoop it out using the back of my hand so that I'm not like getting in with a dirty brush or anything and getting in and using it on people's eyes um, so I just use this wee fine brush 
And if I just get you to look up and over this way for me, and I just take it in here and. Sorry. And just starting over this way. I know we're using black here, but we're just keeping it very soft. It's just so that it's not going on too harsh. If you just close this on it, if you just look straight forward, and as you'll see, that just blends it in that little more, a little bit better. Just blends it in this with our lashes. And if you just close your eyes, I'm just closing and showing we have all these wee bits in here. If you just open, um, normally we would do the brows and things, but Brittany's just had her brows um, done. She's had them tinted, so that's the way she wants to leave them. She's not wanting to go for with more like heavy brows and things. She's wanting to keep them just quite like that. So um, I would also give a wee spray, usually over with, just goes over it. So what is this? This is just a fixing spray. Um, straight after makeup, usually. Um, the client's skin can look a wee bit powdery and things like that, just basically until the skin starts producing its oils and it usually then starts settling in. Usually I think it takes, sometimes it does take about maybe like 15 minutes to actually the makeup's finished and they start seeing it how it really is. So usually just to speed up the process, I usually give it a fix, um, a little spray, fixing spray and this just helps take some of the powder look off it and then when the client looks at it they can actually see it's not as powdery looking, so it's quite good just to use a wee fixing spray over their makeup. So that's the bridesmaids? Yeah, that's makeup. that would be the bridesmaids look.